Some in Uvalde are already taking action. Amory Joe Garza's dad has lawyered up to investigate the marketing strategies of gunmaker Daniel Defense. Austin attorney Jamal El Safar says he's doing the same for another victim's family. Let's take a look behind the curtain. What, what are y'all really doing and how extensive is it? Are you trying to get kids hooked on guns? Um, these vi and not just any gun. This is an AR-15. Another step in the road for the lack of accountability. Welcome to another installment of Connecticut Gun Bench. Today's video is brought to you by PAN Firearms LLC, PAN Firearms for your NRA certification and multifaceted gun training. You can reach us at 203-300-6343 or use our website at www.panfirearmsllc.com. As always, you can check out the link in the description box below. And let's talk about this. In what I find is no surprise whatsoever, Certain elements of, we know, we all know what happened, Uvalde, Texas, and the school shooting there. What is now happening is the certain elements, certain people are filing suit against Daniel Defense. Not against the police department who stood outside for an hour, not for the school, you know, the city council who, you know, basically fired their police chief. No, no, they're not responsible. Not the family of the shooter. Nope, they're not responsible either. Let's sue the gun manufacturer because they're responsible. And as I said, I am not surprised because this is the new trend. You know, accountability, throw it out the window. Every, no one is to blame except for those things that we can use to promote an agenda. Because I uh, did a video on this, oh uh, gosh, just a while ago where I said that this is leading us down the road where they're going to try to sue the gun manufacturers out of business. But let's take a quick look at this video here, just for context, and then we'll come back. All right, let's go ahead and watch that. Here tonight at five in the aftermath of the deadly Texas shooting, parents of one of the victims have partnered with a Texas attorney and a lawyer who represented the families of Sandy Hook victims. Our San Antonio, Texas sister station has more on the legal fight now behind mass shootings. The parents of Amory Jo Garza partnered with a Texas attorney and the lawyer who represented the families of Sandy Hook victims that won a $73 million settlement against Remington. They sent a letter to Daniel Defense requesting information in hopes of holding the gunmaker accountable for the way it markets guns. We've done our own research on the company so far, and based upon what we've seen, it looks like they have actually advertised this assault weapon. It literally is an assault weapon to young men or young women, teens. And uh, some of the ads even had children holding this rifle. And uh, we, we want to get behind it and see, you know, who they were in contact with, what their media strategy was, so that we can determine to the extent we can how to prevent this from happening again. Daniel Defense posted this image that has since been removed of a toddler with an assault rifle on May 16th, just a week before the Uvalde shooting. Amory Joe's dad said this in a statement. My purpose for being now is to honor Amory Joe's memory. She would want me to do everything I can so this will never happen again to any other child. I have to fight for her. Amelia, also known as Amy Marine, a speech pathology clerk who was at Robb Elementary the day of the shooting, sent a similar demand for marketing information, but filed hers through the courts. We reached out to her attorney, but got no response. Ken's Five reached out to Daniel Defense, but received no comment. The gunmaker's website does have a statement that acknowledges the Uvalde shooting. It reads in part, we will cooperate with all federal, state, and local law enforcement authorities in their investigations. We will keep the families of the victims and the entire Uvalde community in our thoughts and prayers. The attorney for Amory Joe's parents said the information they get will be made public. Because we want to show the country, if not the world, you know, what's behind these marketing schemes and why these young men are, you know, playing these games and then buying these rifles and going and slaughtering people. All right, you saw that and you heard that. You know, 
Mm, it's frustrating. When somebody, you know, we've had people who are deliberately killed by people driving motor vehicles, deliberately, not accidentally, deliberately killed. Do we sue the car manufacturer? And then say, well, their, you know, advertising practices somehow led to this. When they show you the Jeep and the off-road and jumping dunes and what have you, we don't turn around and say, when somebody goes out and rolls one over, we don't go, well, it's because of their advertising practices that this happened. We don't do stuff like that. We had an incident in Canada that I want to talk about in another video. The person, they stabbed 10 people. 10 people are dead, like 19 injured. Are they going to go sue the knife manufacturer? No, they're not going to do that. And, and once again, you know, it's interesting how the same lawyer that worked on the Sandy Hook case is also involved in this. I guess his, you know, hey, here's a little 40%, you know, he's starting to become the, uh, <laughs> the ambulance chaser here. As long as he gets his little 40%, he's good. And that's really disturbing. And one thing you gotta remember is, is the difference between these two cases. Remington in the Sandy Hook incident, Remington did not settle anything. The insurance companies settled. Remington, I wanna say the actual brand name Remington is owned by Wells Fargo. Can't be 100% on that. I, one of the banking conglomerates has it. But the families of Sandy Hook told that person who owns the Remington name to stay out of their lawsuit. They didn't want them to challenge it. So if Remington settled, why did the families go to Remington and say, hey, stay out of ours, just stay out of our way. Okay, so Remington did not settle. But this is gonna be a little different. And I'm just gonna pull this up here because we need to give it a little bit more context. This is from, this is a local news affiliate, WSAV. But titled New Legal Filings Names Daniel Defense for its reported marketing practices. This is the new trend. We're gonna, they can't attack them directly for saying you manufactured this thing because of the Protection and Lawful Commerce Arms Act, which prevents somebody from suing a gun manufacturer when somebody uses their item in a nefarious manner. But what they're doing is saying, the way you advertised it is irresponsible and it caused this, which is a mind blower because once again, my 20 years in the gun industry, I've never seen any manufacturer put out any advertising and said, yeah, go scoot up, shoot up a school. You know, hey, it's cool. There's nothing like that out there. So they're really just circumventing and using, well, gaslighting emotions to put, you know, put out these kids' pictures and saying, oh, let's not have this happen again. It's going to happen again. You know why? Because we're not addressing the root problem and it's not guns. But let me go to this here. Savannah, Georgia, a woman who says she hid from the gunman at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas, as he killed 21 people, is pointing a new legal filing at Daniel Fence in Byron County, Bryan County, sorry. That's after confirmation that the gunman bought the AR-15 star rifle used in the massacre from the gun manufacturer. The shooter purchased two guns, one just the day before his 18th birthday, the second gun was purchased a few days later. And it's really fascinating how this guy bought $2,500 rifles. Apparently, he lived at home, had a fight with his mother over a telephone bill that he wanted her to pay, but he's got almost five grand to go out and spend on guns. Uh, but, hey, quote, in this situation, we're not looking at whether Daniel Defense marketed to children or marketed to people it might be inappropriate to market to, said Donald Flannery III, an attorney in San Antonio who is representing the petition in the filing, we know that the shooter formed his intent to acquire these firearms before his 18th birthday, which I'm not sure under Texas law how that works. I, I would, I'm going to, somebody in Texas, I hope you can clear this for me, but I believe you have to be 18. But he tried to buy them before his 18th birthday. So he bought one just after his 18th birthday. So he, yeah. But Flannery emphasized that this is what is known in Texas as a pre-suit deposition. The filing indicates that the petitioner will seek answers to a list of questions, including how many AR-15 rifles Daniel Defense has sold in the last decade, to whom those weapons have been sold, and how much profit the gunmaker has made in that time. Who cares? So what? They sold a thousand. You had this one incident. So what? Capitalism. Because some idiot goes out and uses their that item in, in just a douchebag manner. Excuse my French. Is not on the company, but 
The filing also says the company has marketed products associating firearms and minors by posting on social media. Quote, Daniel Defense, through their social media posts, encouraged adults to purchase firearms and put them in the hands of children, said Flannery. That's just lawyers speak trying to boost this case. If you go back, you know, it's amazing. If you go back to the ads from the 60s, 50s, the 40s, you see entire families in like cartoon character, but they're all armed and they're, you know, kids out there shooting at tin cans. So he's trying to, once again, he's playing the emotion game, but... So we need to investigate those marketing pop practices because they, Daniel Defense, may have crossed the line, said Flannery, which they did not. Once again, he's playing an emotion. They may have been irresponsible and they may have done things for which they won't have immunity. Once again, they're playing, they can't go directly and say, because you made this, this happened. Because P, the Protection and Lawful Commerce Arms, Protection and Lawful Commerce Act, in Arms Act, you know, it protects them from somebody using their weapons or firearms in a nefarious manner. But he's trying to say it's their marketing practices that caused this. And he's playing every emotional gaslight game that he can to get there. But the attorney says shield laws do not prevent gun manufacturers from being sued for how someone may use a weapon. But he says, depending on the answers to the investigation they want to launch, a lawsuit over marketing practice may be, future, may be a future possibility. And in, so I'm not really going to get too deep into this because once again, he's just gaslighting through this whole thing. Um, now I'm going to go down to here because this is very interesting once again, because it comes back to my point about where did the money come from, from this. He's talking about the Las Vegas shooting where he said four, you know, Air 15 weapons person from Daniel Fence were found in a hotel room with a gunman who committed a horrific 2017 mass shooting in Las Vegas in which 60 people died. So this person went out and purchased those guns legally. Daniel Defense didn't give them to him and say, hey, go shoot up Las Vegas Strip with him. You know, but this is the new game. Circumvent the Protection and Law for Commerce Act by stating that your man, your advertising policies are the reason why these things are happening. Once again, it's no accountability. No accountability. They didn't go after the police department. They didn't go after the city council. They didn't go after the state. They didn't, no, no. It's the gun manufacturer's fault that this idiot who was apparently broke managed to find five, $6,000 to go buy all this stuff and go out and do what he did. Very disappointing. I'm not, like I said, I'm not surprised. I expected this. I expected this. This is the new trend. And it's really downright disgusting, quite honestly, that this is how we're going to go with this. But in the end, I was said it from the beginning, civil lawsuits are about money. It's not about justice. It's about getting paid. You may not like to hear that, but that's the truth. It's about getting paid, period. Because a lot of millionaires have been made recently. And in the last, what, a good 10, 15 years from this kind of stuff. So it's not about justice, it's about getting paid. And very disappointing. But hopefully we'll flip the Congress, flip the Senate, and 2024 we can actually have legislation where you can't just arbitrarily blame somebody for someone else's actions. But let me know what you think. As always, you can leave your comments in the comment section below. And as always, any statements of violence, the statements that lead to violence will be removed. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're notified the next time a video goes live. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.